The report from the Royal Commission into National Natural Disaster Arrangements has highlighted a lack of action by the Federal Government during the 2019-20 bushfire crisis. The Federal Member for Macquarie is Susan Templeman. She's with us on the program. Good morning, Susan. Hi, Marcus. Thank you so much. Now, I... Uh, it's the first time I've spoken to you publicly and I hadn't realised that you lost your home back in 2013 during the bushfires in the Blue Mountains. Yeah, look, we've just had the seventh anniversary in the Winmalee and, and Mount Victoria communities yeah. marking that bushfire. And I was, you know, it feels like the summer bushfires were a long time ago, but they still feel very fresh in my community because... We obviously had Gosters Fire, which was mm. the largest fire the world has ever seen wow. from a single ignition point. And we still very much feel like it was only yesterday that the air was full of smoke, you know, mm. that lasted obviously for months. So while COVID has created even more complications, the memory of bushfires is very, very fresh. Well, absolutely, particularly for those communities mostly affected by it. And I mean, of course, I meant no disrespect when I said it feels oh, like a no, long no, time you, away. You're right. Yes. I mean, we, we were, we're working really hard to make sure on the national agenda yeah. that these communities aren't forgotten. No, well, absolutely. And you speak of the Gospers Mountain Fire. I mean, I... Uh, live, I was living very close uh, out Warragamba way to the big fire that went through there. I mean, there were homes lost less than three kilometres from where I was living. And it was scary times. And had there not have been a, a sudden shift in the uh, the wind direction, then we could have been out in a little trouble up around Silverdale, Warragamba as well, like we were back in early 2000. I mean, it's just incredible. Uh, and what can we do yeah. about it? I mean, what ultimately... Uh, has this commission found into natural disasters that we need to improve on to... I mean, we're always going to have bushfires in this country of ours. It's, you know, part and parcel. We are a, a land of, you know, fires and, and droughts and floods and all the rest of it. What can we do? Yeah, well, look, I think what, the re what was really good to see in the report was a recognition that, in fact, we had failed to do some of the things that could have been done, that the government had failed to prepare for a big bushfire. It, had, it Really, this report shows that it failed to respond to, in the best possible way to it. It was slow to recognise the enormity of the catastrophe, I think, and we saw plenty of evidence of that, uh, and, and slow to call out agencies like the Australian Defence Force in, in any numbers to help respond to it. And then the third bit of is the slow to recover and the recovery has felt exceptionally slow yes. out in my community and it would be the same all over Greater Sydney and I know it's the same on the South Coast and even on the North Coast because remember this time last year there'd been a couple of months of fires up on the North Coast by now. Uh, so yeah. it's a really comprehensive report. Uh, the big thing that underpins it is the recognition that yes we've always had fires but that the, the natural disasters are going to get uh, deeper, bigger, more frequent, that they're going to be, and it says, more complex, more unpredictable, more difficult to manage than anything we've seen before. And it isn't just talking bushfires, it's talking cyclones, um, uh, you know, tsunamis, floods, all the different catastrophes that changes in the climate will make more extreme. So that's underpins everything this report talks about but it says the Australian government should be doing much more before during and after look one of the things that I've got in the notes here from your office is in relation to the the use of the Australian Defence Force uh, now I uh, during the bushfire crisis of last uh, summer I spent a bit of time out in the Hawkesbury I was house sitting for my sister of all things and I would drive past Richmond RAAF base each and every day to come into work here in the city and I would see that uh, there were you know the big 737s and um, the Nancy, I can't remember what, what, what it was called, uh, the Angels from the Sky. And they, a couple of them were, were, that's where they were based and taking off and re, refueling and getting their supply of retardant and all the rest of it. But, I mean, is that something we can look at in the future of maybe housing permanently a, a, an air response to national disasters at Richmond at the RAAF base? 
Yeah, you're thinking exactly as I am. It was an incredible hive of activity there and really comforting to see uh, the, the planes coming and going. That's certainly one bit of aircraft noise you don't mind in the, in the middle of a bushfire. Uh, and I do think this, the Royal Commission recommends that we beef up the fleet that is permanently based to tackle these disasters. Okay. And I can't think of a better place than the Richmond RAF base for that to be based. Easy access north and south yes. um, uh, it's, it would be the, um, you know, at the epicentre really of uh, the area that cover the bushfires um, appearing uh, the other thing of course is you, we need to be training up the pilots to fly those planes mm-hmm. right now we tend to import all of that expertise we do. Yes. but the Royal Commission talks about it having a homegrown fleet with homegrown pilots and operators so that's that is a really positive um, recommendation and one that obviously requires cooperation with the states, as yeah. many of these do, but it needs leadership from the federal government on that one. Uh, I mean, I think the RAF base was a great example of the uh, Defence Force playing a role, uh, but the Royal Commission notes that there is greater capacity for Defence Force personnel to be involved. And one of the things I saw, which... Obviously, should have all this should have been talked about long before we got the biggest bushfire we've ever seen. Yeah. Um, and that is how we support the rural fire service volunteers to clear fire trails. Now sure. they're an aging volunteer workforce, and uh, you know that the younger, um, uh, very physically fit uh, defence force personnel could be just a great addition to the the person power that's needed to get out and do really labour-intensive work on well, those fire right. trails. I mean, I've uh, I've always been an advocate for, you know, you know, in peacetime, which we effectively are, thank goodness, why wouldn't we be using the Australian Defence Force, who we're already paying anyway, and using their expertise, their manpower, their muscle power, if you like, uh, to do all of the, the hard work? I mean, I know they were eventually called in, but, I mean, I think they should be fire-ready at all time. Uh, so that's very important. Also, um, I noticed that the issue, too, is about communications. Now, it's very difficult to fight uh, any uh, natural national disaster without communication. Black spots from immobile phone areas are, are a problem. Is that right? Yeah, there's, there's two aspects to the communication. There's the way the emergency services personnel communicate with each other and the Royal Commission makes a whole range of recommendations about improving their ability to communicate but the other one is about mobile phone towers going out of action because power gets cut off. There's recommendations about keeping the power on and having backups to that. We had that problem up on the Bells line of road at Bilpin where the mobile phone tower meant that hundreds of people had no communication because their landlines went as well. And about the other bit is the mobile black spots where there simply is no mobile coverage. And, and with NBN now, the minute your uh, phone line, your um, electricity goes, you lose not just your internet but your phone line, yes. and if you don't have mobile coverage, you've got nothing. And there is, there doesn't seem to be a lot in the Royal Commission, and I've on my first my first read of it, um, and I'm going to be asking questions about that, about Good. the attention that needs to be paid to pick up those mobile black spots. Uh, my community, you know, the Blue Mountains and the Hawkesbury, there are mobile phone black spots all over the place, and that really puts people's lives at danger. Uh, and I think the government is failing to recognise that. Yep. All right, Susan, great to have you on the program. We'll talk more on this, uh, and good luck. I know you're going to be challenging a few issues, but, I mean, overall, I would hope the federal government will implement all of the recommendations from this Royal Commission into National Natural Disaster Arrangements. Absolutely. And, you know, the big question and and your conversation earlier with Andrew Lee, the transparency around the recovery efforts, that's the other thing we need to keep an eye on. Well said. Okay, thank you for coming on. Thanks, Marcus.